Good morning, everybody. <laughs> okay, uh, I would like to start with something a bit generic in terms of uh, kin operation, uh, so we understand where I'm going when I'm going to do the the report, uh, the report of the survey, and so we are on the same page as far as what I'm talking about. Uh, you can agree, you can disagree. I'm just explaining what what is my approach. Um, when you look at the kiln, a lot of time people look at it with uh, heat and energy primary. But it's not only that. In the kiln we need to supply energy, we need to supply heat, but we also need to supply air for various concerns. We need to cool down the product, we need to transfer energy, we need to burn out the, the crap which is inside of the raw material in the preheat, and that's not the heat, it's the air and the heat. So if we don't have the right amount of airflow through the kiln at specific areas, it doesn't work. No matter what we do with the burners, no matter what we do with excess air, etc., we can cheat with that, but we will never achieve an optimum operation of the kiln. People agree with that or statement? Okay, good. So now I'm going to do a quick <coughs> schematic of a simplified kiln and explain what I'm what I'm looking for what I'm when I'm looking at a kiln operation in general. And then we'll go to the specific of your kiln. Okay? So don't bear with me. <laughs> so technically a tunnel kiln is a tube which which works simple in a simplified way as a heat exchanger. So we have product, a mass of product moving into the kiln and we have a mass of air entering the other way and escaping through the exhaust. That is a very simplified kiln. What goes in goes out. In a sense, that's the old, 50 years old kiln with no doors and exhaust. We rely on the exhaust to pull the air into the kiln and that's a simple, I mean, a relatively simple process. The thing is, the mass of bricks need to be balanced with the mass of air because if we have too much air entering the kiln the heat the heat that we supply in the firing zone and in in the preheat is going to move like an unbalanced in heat exchanger if i'm if i have too much fluid to cool down the heat in the other way, temperature will drop or will increase or we move along that tube. Right? So when we look at it with just two systems, basically one system supplying, one system pulling, the main element, the main element become the speed and the cap and the quantity of air we remove with this fan, right? Because if I have more product, I will need to pull more air. If I have less product, I will need to pull less air, right? It's a it's a one one fan system, I would call it. The thing is, so do do we agree that? Uh, and I'm talk I'm using the word mass because, okay. The pounds of air I'm supplying here are totally related to the pound of bricks I'm supplying there. Okay? I have an ideal ratio. Okay? So if I double that quantity of bricks, I need to double that quantity of air to achieve exactly the same effect 
in the cooling, in the preheat, in the firing zone. Right? Everybody is very quiet. <laughs> okay. So, um, now the thing is the kilns, as they, they modernized, they have evaluated. Okay, the evolution of the kiln was, let's shorten the kiln, let's make them more efficient for cost. And people in their design started adding a door with a fan. You notice before I didn't put a fan, there was no fan. It was just whatever was pulled. So now I have a fan here, but also now we have a fan here which I call, as a generic term, a waste heat recovery. So whatever is not needed by the kiln. And the term waste is really important. It's what the kiln doesn't need to operate properly. OK? And I'll come back to that. But so now we have a fan here. So the flow here is no more the flow of air which enter the kiln, but a combination of this and that, right? And then we have rapid cooling, which add more air. And then we have, I mean, the, the side burners. Sometimes we have uh, The, the desk is <laughs> it's wobbling a bit. <laughs> we have uh, some air injection, for example. So now the air all over the kiln is a bit more complicated to, uh, to establish because it's no more a one fan system. It becomes a one two, three, four, five, six, five fans, plus, plus, and I didn't mention that yet, but we have the four. We have car tunnel, which is supplying air, removing air, And unfortunately, pushing or pulling air. And okay, uh, and we also have a roof, which supply air, which pull air out, and with all kinds of interaction. So when, when you want to assess a kiln, just looking at temperature and even pressure, and I'll come back to the pressure issue, but if you don't know the flow at each of the spot of the kiln, you don't exactly know how your kin operate. You have a result from, okay, I have a product here. At the end of the kin, I have the product. Good, bad, nah, problems. Nah. It's, it's a bit of a, of like looking at something with just a tiny part of the information. And when you get flow, it's not a magic wand. It doesn't tell you, ah, I know exactly what to do, but it's a starting point to now manipulate your different flow to achieve a specific balance. And if you don't know those flow ahead of time before you change the speed of a fan or the position of a damper or the position of several dampers which will kind of interact against each other, you don't know what effect you create into the tunnel. And that quantity of air passing through the tunnel is critical. 
you were talking about color homogeneity between left, right, etc. If you don't have enough airflow through the tunnel, you don't create a good condition to distribute your heat properly. If the tunnel is lacking air in, in areas, the temperature is not going to move properly between the product. We rely on the energy transfer on conduction and radiation, yes, but convection has a big role to play. Also, when you don't have enough air into the, f the tunnel, your flame has a tendency to, to be more prone to make uh, flame uh, infringement, that's the right term? Hot spots. Hot spots. Because you don't have anything to actually distribute that heat. And if you are allow the heat to be trapped in the firing lane without being, you know, go away, go away, move, do, you don't heat just the firing lane, you want to heat the whole load, then the air has a crucial role to play. A lot of time, people tend to play with excess air because, oh yeah, I'm going to drop the flame temperature. But a lot of time, especially in the firing zone, you should not have to drop the flame temperature because you need that temperature, but you need the air to actually distribute that energy and temperature properly. Okay? So, for, for, for me to, to, to assess a keen operation, the first step I, I'm always doing is looking at this fantastic arrow. <laughs> It's looking at, at this quantity of air right after my rapid cooling and before my firing zone, okay? To assess if I have enough air or too much or actually sometimes airflow going the other way, which is what people call backdrafting, which is terrible in terms of kin operation. You it's terrible in terms of energy, it's terrible in terms of quality of product, heat distribution, everything. You can make away with that situation a lot of time by cheating on the burners. But for me, you should never have to cheat on the burners if the kin is properly balanced. So balance is the first step. The next step is burner adjustment and getting the burner with the power, with the flame temperature. In the preheat, yeah, you may want the flame to be lower temperature, but you still need to be reasonable with that, because when you talk about 100, 200% excess air on a burner, and I'm not saying that's the case here, but I've seen places where people put 200% excess air, well, it's very, very costly in terms of energy. So if I have another mean, which is to use the air inside of the kiln, the energy which is inside of the kiln, and move it properly, then my kiln is much more efficient. Yes? Do we, we agree. Do we agree on that? Yes. You've already, you've already paid for that energy. Yes. Uh, well, the, the, the system we have at the back end of the kiln which, depending on the uh, engineering company you build your kiln, have different names. I, I mean, we like to call it the waste heat recovery because we want people to always remember that the waste is what, it's a leftover. It's what's left once everything has been used, okay? It's not what we want from the kiln. The kiln has a s only a certain quantity of energy that it can give you without becoming a heat generator. You don't want the kiln to be a heat generator. That's not its job. It's not a boiler, it's not a heater, it's a kiln. And the kiln has some heat that we can safely take away for the dryer. But if we take more than, it w than what it should give us, then you deplete that air quantity here, you deplete the energy that at some point 
you will have to supply in the preheat in the firing zone. Does it go against ideas you guys have or we are on the same page? Well, I, I agree, but we, we, we look at typically look at the big picture. And yeah, you call it waste heat, and we got a waste heat duct and a waste heat damper and waste heat. But it's our supply. I mean we purposely pull off because that is a that that's heat to the dryer. Yes, that's heat which we make available to the dryer. The thing is, if the dryer needs more air, more air, quant more air mass, and more energy, it should not come from the kiln. It should come from something external. And the external is actually cheaper than trying to use the kiln as a heat generator. My whole point is I've seen many times people using the kiln and bleeding it to the point where, okay, yeah, my dryer is happy, I have no more booster burner running on the dryer, but guess what? When an when, when engineering company designed a dryer and a kiln, most of the time we have booster burner because we know not all the scenario are capable of supplying the heat needed for the dryer by the kiln, especially when you have a light product into the kiln and you have a transition on your dryer with a heavy product, you are not going to be able to supply the energy. So you need the booster burner. But the booster burner is more efficient to deliver the heat specifically at that time, at that spot, than trying to steal it from the kiln and basically having all the burners doing much more work because, hey, I'm missing that energy into the tunnel. So as long as you guys are happy with that, it's good. Again, <laughs> I've seen, I've seen, I always tell people the, the main is the kiln. You have to make the kiln happy. The dryer, if it's not happy, you have to find a way to make it happy. It's not the other way. If, if the dryer, I've seen people running the kiln for the dryer and after that complaining that product are bad. Well, <laughs> it's a, there, is, there is a reason for that. So you guys, you guys okay with that? Okay. A lot of people don't understand. I mean, that's a good point. You know, and a, and a lot of times we forget that, okay? Yeah. We, we, we try to run the kiln to make the dryer happen, which is really not the way you do it. Right? No. So, and people don't realize that, hey, when you move your rook, that you open yourself up for, you know, the queen sacrifice or whatever, right? And uh, people don't think that far ahead. And so, yeah, whenever you're disrupting the amount that you're you know, increasing the amount you pull out there, well, of course, the, the balance is, is, is gone because now all of a sudden you're, you're removing that mass of air that you're needing to, to keep everything else where it needs to be. Exactly, exactly. And it's, it's easy to forget it because we see the kin as a big source of energy. So let's, let's pull it. It doesn't matter because, oh yeah, my burner, they, they keep up. Yeah, but now we, we make the burner run not just for the kin and not just for the process, but we make it run as an additional burner for the dryer. And that's that doesn't work. Yeah, and, that, and you know, yeah, we had a lot of spot issues, and I would not be at all surprised that a lot of it came from the fact that we were maybe stalling the uh, the air movement and, and clogging that. And we we'll go to the specific of your kin. So at the moment, I'm not uh, talking about here. I'm just making sure we have the same uh, principle in our mind. So when I'm going to talk about what you guys what I saw, what you guys had Monday, and again, it's, it's a snapshot. It's not, I don't know what you're going to do at 15 cars per day. I don't know what you do when you are at 6 cars per day. It's a snapshot at 12 cars per day with those refired brick. Okay, but it gives me some uh, s food for thought on some of the things you guys are doing on the camp. Okay, and I don't assume you guys 
know or agree or are, are aware of anything, so don't take it as a... Uh, <laughs> okay, so we, we are just on the same page after that, okay? Um, do, do, do you have, uh, I mean, do you have any questions relative to, to, that, to those <coughs> principles? The, the last thing I, I wanted to mention is I've always used the, the term mass of air. I know fans are designed for CFM and uh, people always talk about volume of air. But we can't, when we look at the balance of a kiln, we can't think in terms of volume because we have a volume of air at 350 Fahrenheit, we have a volume of air at, at uh, 70 Fahrenheit. They don't have the same mass. So we need to compare, we need to compare mass for mass because mass is, is, is not taking in account the temperature because a, a, a pound of air is a pound of air. But a cubic feet of air, if you don't know the temperature, it doesn't have the, it's not the same quantity of air. So you can't compare the air from the waste heat with the air from the supply at the end of the kiln in volume. You have to compare in, uh, in mass. You know that, that air into the, 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 the hot waste heat recovery, you know, the speed in that duct is big because that pounds of air is at 1500 Fahrenheit and it's, it's occupy a, a big volume. Okay? So mass, we, we to, we're going to talk about mass of air. And basically what I've been doing Monday with the pitot tube, with the anemometer, etc., is measuring velocities to calculate mass of air and then to compare each, each of the spots and basically extrapolate how much air I have through my process. Okay? Because, okay, uh, another thing I want to talk about is uh, on the lingual kiln and on the principle, most, most of the regulation and I know you guys have a lot of things in manual at the moment, but most of the regulation are based on pressure. Pressure uh, is, a, is a difficult uh, value to, to, to look at if you don't know the flow. Because you can establish the same pressure into that area, for example, which is which is where the, you have a magnetite at the moment on the back end of the kiln. You can establish a, pr a pressure here with different scenario of quantity of air and establish exactly the same pressure. If I double the quantity of air here and I double the quantity of air I remove there, I will have the exactly the same pressure as with the single volume of air. But the cooling conditions here are going to be completely different. So even though you read the same pressure, you don't have the same, the same flow conditions. Okay? We agree on that? And it's the same for the exhaust pressure, etc. If I reduce the flow here and I reduce my speed, I will maintain exactly the same pressure. Does it mean I, I maintain the same flow conditions? No. Okay? Yes? Only in general, around the field. Mm -hmm. what, what's your thoughts on that? Because most of them I've been to that even were designed for that are either shut off or taken off the kill when they rebuild. Normally, the role, the role of those injections is to stir the heat from the top of the kiln and bring it down to the bottom to create some sort of a, it's not a recirculation but it helps slow down the heat coming from the top <coughs> and kind of bring it down and we can come back we will, and we will come back on your specific kiln 
but I noticed that your injection here is completely stopped, but you have a lot of hair that entering entering through the doors. Personally, uh, I mean, we ca we're going to discuss about the why as we go s spot by spot, but I I'd rather use this than use that. If you are only looking for a way to actually uh, dilute your exhaust, I would I would use this instead of that. But okay, let's not go ahead of things. But yeah, I mean the the the, the concept of the inj injection is really to 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 stir. It helps also dilute the smoke. It it minimizes uh, the the speed the speed of the of the top air, which is the hottest one. Uh, for me, recirculations are more efficient than injection, but it's not the same cost. <laughs> it's not the same. Uh, I mean, it's not the same investment. Um, anything else? Is that the <coughs> contraflow chance you're talking about? Yeah. We're not using? Yeah. That's uh, what you call contraflow? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's just uh, the, the fan the fan with the different rows of, uh, mm -hmm. of, of air, you know? Right. Yeah. You have that fan here and it, it just blow air through the top. Uh, I don't know if it was installed on the original or yeah. if it was installed on the second yeah. part. Yeah. Uh, normally, when you increase the quantity, you try to. I mean, that's a practice. We, Seric, Seric. I mean, uh, when I say we, okay, Seric was doing it a lot. Again, it's a. Uh, I would call the the poor man the poor man recirculation. Uh, now, okay, let's call it. You know, uh, and. Okay, I'm not going into <laughs> controversies on design or anything. I have a lot to say on Lingual Keller theory. <laughs> they all have their their plus and, uh, <laughs> and minus. But what, what you're saying is that it's not a bad practice. No. But it's it's not as good as recirculation. Yes, yes. But <coughs> this is something. Okay, again, if. If I didn't see that and you had that closed and I, w I would be like, okay, they don't need it, looks okay. I mean, if you pass, a, uh, I mean, actually the best way to actually visualize that is to pass a data pack and see what uh, what's happening in that area, okay, with and without. So That's when you talk about what's coming through the door, are you talking the two The two uh, emergency door being open. Talking about the slides on the side of the exhaust damper, or are you talking? No, no, I'm talking about the, the door. You know, you, you you have the entrance door here, with the two oh, about the, kick out the two two kick out panels are, are fully open, and that's that's a, a huge quantity of, of fresh air, which actually <laughs> cool down cool down. Uh, anyway, yeah, we can. Okay, we'll we'll, we'll go back to that. Uh <laughs> We'll go to the specific one by one, okay? But uh, to answer that question, no, this is not a bad practice. Uh, is it doing as much as we would love to? Probably not. But again, bringing fresh air for for that area, I would bring it. I would prefer to bring it from that than bring it from this. Okay. Again, if. If I was operating that kin, I would revisit. And again, I don't have the history. I don't have the past 30 years of operation of that kin. So I don't know all. You know, I, I come with just a fresh pair of eyes. This is what I see today. I'm questioning this. How much was experimented, not experiment? You know, why did we conclude that we could stop? Stop it! I don't. I don't assume. I don't want to 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 decide on that. I'm just saying. Hmm. Did we did we stop it for the proper reason, or was it stopped because 
other things were not working, but can we get can we get everything working? Because it's again, it's a hole. It's a you, you cannot just say, oh, this is working wrong. This is working wrong. Yeah, but why are we are we getting everything ahead of it proper? That's what I'm I'm just questioning. Questions, comments. Uh, yeah, go ahead. That makeup burner. What do you call it? Booster burner. Uh, yeah, the makeup burner or booster burner. Yes. Would that be a better way of getting heat to the back of the dryer instead of robbing it from the fuel? Yes. Yes, definitely. We just actually did the test. I mean, the test. <laughs> It's more than a test. We, we uh, uh, Tulsa, the Tulsa factory, you know, uh, okay, it's a tunnel dryer, it's not a chamber dryer, but it's a tunnel dryer. And uh, when, I, when I arrived, it's just to give you a bit of a background history on that. Since it's a factory in your group, I can <laughs> share <laughs> details. Uh, when I arrived, they, they did. Okay, the, the, the manufacturer of the dryer and the kiln had a booster burner on the dryer. At some point, booster burner was removed. Bah, waste of money. The thing is, when I arrived, the kiln was in a st bad state of backdrafting because they were running the dryer, they were running the kiln to feed the dryer. So. The first thing we did is, I said, look, install a booster burner and run the kiln in the right direction and see what happened. We're going to use more gas, we're going to see what happened. They changed, they installed the booster burner, they changed the kiln to the proper operation. No, no change on the gas usage. No more, no less. Okay? Then the next step they did was because the kiln was running in the proper direction, they could work on their burner. And their burner were cheating everywhere. But guess what? When you remove the cheat, <laughs> the last visit, we found a, a change of, of gas usage up to 9% less gas and they just just worked on half of their burner so far so they're probably yeah yeah wow yeah i like i like wow yeah because you know the f the first thing is on the second visit when i came back with the booster burner installed they could not recognize their kiln the hacks were straighter the homogeneity was back everything was great but the gas was the same. I say, hey, it means that whatever we were bringing to the dry, uh, the kiln, we were messing up the kiln, and we were using gas from the kiln. Now we are using gas from the booster, and the gas bill didn't change at the time. So for me, it's a win-win situation. You improve the quality, and you don't waste energy. And the next step was, hey, the kiln now is ready for the next step. The kiln is ready for burner tune-up, not the other way around. You know, it's so, and, and I'm not saying that your case here. I'm just saying, yes, I have proof, and it's not the only place. If I, if, you know, when I, I told people, again, yes, it's an advice, it's an opinion, everybody can have an opinion, but I knew they were not, I mean, there was 99% chance that they would not hurt their gas usage, on the contrary. Okay? So, if you ask me, a makeup burner, using a makeup burner at the right time, instead of overdoing the kin, 100%, yes. It's a, it's a, the, the, it's it's uh, it's it's often it's it's a situation that I often find is 
oh, we removed the booster burner because it was using gas. Yeah. But it doesn't mean the kin is an infinite source of energy. <laughs> okay? So definitively, that's, that's if, if you are, if you have a booster, a makeup burner, and sometimes you feel like, hmm, maybe we are kind of demanding too much on the kiln, that's when you should say, leave the kiln alone, bring some fresh air, open up your booster burner, and bring the volume, bring the heat where it's needed, when it's needed and leave the kiln alone if the kiln is properly running. Don't disturb the kiln. Okay? Mm -hmm. yeah, does that answer your question? I mean, yeah. And, and uh, again, <coughs> this is the example of a plant in your group. I'm not talking about <laughs> anybody else. <laughs> I see a lot of <laughs> different kilns. Okay? So, uh, and, and, and don't make fun of people in Tulsa because it happens a lot of places. I mean, <laughs> okay? All right, so I'm going to remove that and we're going to start with, uh, with my uh, report and go. What are, what are the correct ratios? Can you describe them? Alors, Oh, the correct, the correct ratios. Yeah, okay. We can. Gen I have okay. I have target ratios when I start a kiln. To to guide me where I need to to be because you you don't start. Uh, yeah, in the, yeah, yeah. It's a good, it's a good idea. Those those magical numbers are guideline. They are not. Uh, are, you don't have to be exactly there to get your kin right, but there are a few, a few ratios that needs to be really looked at specifically. So, I'm 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 going to clean that up and redo it with a simplified circuit and give you an idea of what uh, what I'm looking at, uh, because you know when you start a kiln, you need to have an idea where where you're going to put your, 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 your fans and your fan flow to get a proper kin operation. Okay, so the, the, the ratio I have, you're going to say, ah, oh, they, they work for a seric kin, etc. Yes, but the principle is still the same. The values are going to change between a lingual, a killer, a seric, but the, the overall principle is in proportion is going to be the same on the anyway I'll okay so let me let me explain what I, I normally do on a ceric kiln okay and I'll explain the the concept after that so normally <sighs> you when when I, I look at a at a kiln, you remember the the, the the first kiln I drew I drew without the door. I started with the exhaust. In a kiln, when we are, where we have a door, where we have an over pressure, a mean to actually supply air into the kiln, you have to start with this fan. If this quantity of air here is wrong everything else is going to be wrong. Right? Because before, when we didn't have door, this one was driving everything. The quantity of air entering the kiln was a result of that fan. Now I still need to know the quantity of air, but I need to start with this fan. Okay? So, this fan, and I, I often use the word overpressure because it's a Old, uh, old series design. Uh, Here they call it the direct cooling. Phase, right? Direct cooling or exit exit cool, and I mean there is plenty of name, but supply air supply 
okay, the, the, the key and supply here. I, I will start with a ratio of four. So four pounds of air for a pound of bricks. Okay, it's a quantity of air versus a quantity of brick. So it, it you say four pounds of air per pound of brick. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's it, it, it's a lot of air. I'm listening. Yeah, yeah, you'll see. Your kin, your kin is not running with those numbers, and I'll come back to that. Okay, no, it's but it's say what? It's much less. Oh yeah, yeah. It's uh, your kin is running at two, two. It's yeah. it's two, in terms of ratio. But will this? Okay, Jim asked me to <laughs> explain my magic numbers. They are my starting numbers. After that, I'll explain how different numbers can work as long as we respect some some relation between those numbers, because there is a ratios and then some relations between those ratios, okay? So, after that, you have the first system which encounter the, the air supply to the kiln is the waste heat recovery system. So, the waste heat recovery system fan it should remove as a target two thirds of air supplied. And you see that now if I start with four, okay, I'll have two point six here. But if I start with two well, I have 1.4 uh, or something like that. Uh, so, what is really important is to make sure that we are around that ratio. And that ratio is, I would say, that ratio of ratio <laughs> is kind of universal. What is not universal is some kilns run with three, some kilns run with two. Okay, that's fine. If it works, that's fine. But what is important is if I'm down to two here, I can't be at 2.6 here. Okay? So now I have 1.4 here moving. Okay? In your case, it's around 1.1, which is uh, no, one, uh, 0 0.9. And after that, you have the rapid cooling. But OK, anyway. After that, we have the rapid cooling. The rapid cooling in, in the ceric system was around 0 0.7 pounds of air per pound of, of bricks. In your case, it's actually half of that. And, uh, and I'll question and discuss about that. Anyway, so you see that now you have 2.1, OK? And then you have all the, the combustion air. Combustion air. Combustion air. And that roughly is 1.2, 1.4. So let's say uh, 1.4. Well, yeah. We're going to make it more fun. And then we have the air injection that we are talking about. And then we have the exhaust. And OK, that's how the, the roughly the theory kin were calculated. OK? But if you take a Lingle kiln or a Keller kiln or a Ajema kiln or whatever, they are not necessarily based on exactly the same values. But you still need enough air here to cool down the product. You still need enough air passing through the firing zone to distribute the heat, etc. Again, if you, if you reduce this, you need to reduce that because you still need to have enough air passing through. 
And the critical thing when we speed up or slow down the push rate on the kiln is to maintain those specific ratios because once we have the ideal spot, so we know the lingual kiln here needs two here and we are removing 1.4 uh, here. That's fine. But if you speed up the kiln and you put 30% more brick into the kiln, you need to have 2.6 here and you need to have uh, uh, 1.9 there to still have the same airflow passing through, but also to have the cooling capacity, the, the recovery, etc. And because your burners are going to work harder, they're going to supply more air, etc. So there is not one adjustment for the kiln. No, it's, it's a whole set. It's a, and it's a whole set. And, and, and you cannot change, for example, you know, in the, in the old, old kiln, people were working with that speed. With the, with the tonnage, right? We you do now. I mean, we'll talk about that in a minute, but yeah. We manipulate it. Yeah, but it's good to manipulate that to accommodate the increase of, of total quantity because, of course, you increase your quantity of brick. You maintain your ratio, but the overall quantity increase. But if you increase this without this and that in relation, where, where, where the air is coming? Through the roof, through the undercar, and we're going to talk extensively about roof and undercar because you have problems with that. But the whole, the whole concept is really to find the right balance. And if I have the right balance at 12 cars per day, then how do I transpose it at 16 cars per day? Because if one of those fans cannot supply or pull what it's supposed to do at 16 cars per day, then all your equilibrium is gone. And one is gone, the old kiln is gone. Even if you don't notice, because the problem is something will compensate. And that's why, I mean, especially a double roof, undercar, you know, is complicated because everything interferes with that. You know, Cyric, at some point, we were making hydro casing, you know, the kiln with the uh, swimming pool. <laughs> Why? Because, like this, you end up with a tunnel which is simple tunnel. It's what goes in goes out. You don't have the roof interfering, you don't have the. Well, there was other problems. And people, I'm not uh, saying that was. Uh, the perfect kiln in the world, but it was a, an interesting kiln to, to operate. And I mean, much, much more simple to actually understand what's happening because it's simplified. And this kind of design, like the Lingle kiln, is complicated. And we're going to see it on the schematic of how I, I had to measure the air and where it goes in, where it goes out. It's complicated. It's very complicated. So, if 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 you don't physically measure and calculate the air going in, going out, it's kind of driving into the fog. You know, you have an idea where you need to go, but you don't see much. Is it this what Neil and, and Stan were trying to do with pressure transducers and? Well, yeah, but, but the pressure and running the uh, kiln exhaust and automatic going, but, but with pressure, not with so much the volume, that's what he's getting at. Because the, the pressure and, and the pressure transducer is great as long as you create the proper conditions of airflow, you measure the pressure for that specific conditions, and you maintain that pressure so the slight variation maintains the flow. But if one flow, um, I mean, if two flows change a lot and they are allowed to change a lot, then that pressure is meaningless. And that's where we're at. Uh, okay, I, and, 
I, I, uh, on purpose, I didn't try to uh, dig into how you guys operate because I wanted to have uh, objective and uh, you know uh, just just what I see at the moment. I, I, I want you. I mean, I want. I'd like you guys to think about this into your specific. And then we can, I, I can answer questions or we can discuss this, uh, discuss that, but I didn't want to tell you, uh, this is, no, no, no. I, I don't know what's, what's right or wrong at the moment. All I know is the kiln has some issues in terms of operation, and I don't know how extreme they are when you go faster, but I can tell at the moment the kiln is not in, in the best condition that it could be. Okay. So again, those magic number is just to illustrate how okay, a bit more here, a bit less there, how how things change. Y y you see directly that if I increase that quantity, this one decreases. If I decrease that quantity, then I I interfere with the firing, etc. You know, it's a it's a snowball. There is a continuous snowball effect in the kiln, and and when you touch one spot, everything is uh, is shaken. It's not localized. Any question? Any comment? And we're going to look at your ratio at the moment and see see what uh, what is feasible. Just just for conversation, mm -hmm. say, say these numbers are the exact numbers that we just. No, just they are not. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Say these are the numbers, and we, you know, we established it at a 12 car or a 14 car. Would you increase those exponentially based on a, a formula? Uh, the formula know, is purely the way the weight, purely the weight. Just, the it, weight, just the weight. If you have, okay, if you have a car, okay, what I to, to calculate the um, the ratio, what do I do? 12 cars per day. Uh, 15,000 uh, king size, uh, 1.4 kilo. Uh, I, I calculate a mass. I, I, I bring it to a per seconds, so you have like a seven pounds per second or something like that of bricks. Then I calculate the air. I have 15 pounds of air. 15 pounds of air, seven pounds of brick ratio 2.1. Okay. If, if tomorrow you have eight pounds of bricks because you are pushing one more car or two more cars, then you need more, more uh, in, in exact proportion. As long as you can maintain it. You, you, you achieve a spot where oh, I want to push more, so I'm going to degrade this, I'm going to degrade that. Happens everywhere. But if I established the, the ratio again at 12 cars per day and the fans, all the fans can maintain that ratio at 15 cars per day, it's purely mathematic. Not in terms of speed of the fan, but in terms of delivery, of mass delivery of the fan. Yes? Right. And the question is, you reach a point at 12 cars a day, your fans are giving you this, and you go to 16, and at some point, there's a fan that cannot deliver what you calculate you need. And so that's the degrade you're talking about. Exactly. It can't quite make it. So you. And, and, and sometimes, uh, we can make it. But if you see a degradation in quality or in, a, in heat distribution of this or that, don't jump, don't accuse the burner right away. Because if it was doing the right job, you know, with the right amount of air, and you lose one of the airflow, you need to find a way to to get that airflow right. You know, like for example, if at 16 cars per day the dryer need more heat, and I, I'm I'm starting to, to to increase that fan to 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 more more airflow, then don't don't because you know you're gonna you're gonna shoot yourself in the foot. You're going to hurt yourself. You have to find another way. I mean, again, if no possible, reasons. if possible, etc. But you know, you you can create your own misery. 
<laughs> Is that a good way to... <laughs> but what I'm trying to do today is just point out things, you know, that needs to be kept on top of your mind and saying, okay, if I do this, what am I going to... what other problem am I going to create? You should not be paralyzed, but you should be able to, to say, okay, where am I? Where do I start? What can I improve? Or if I'm happy with what I have, how do I transfer that to the next push rate? And it's the same when you slow down. Huh? When you, you know, we're talking about speeding up, but when you slow down, everything slow down. I mean, slow, uh, drop down. If, if, if you keep the same airflow, well, things are going to be... Uh, I mean, usually you see it on your temperature, things like that, but again, temperature... Uh, a temperature, for example, in that spot, doesn't mean everything is right. Because, again, you can be putting heat there <coughs> and still maintain your temperature. Those burners would probably have an easy time to keep the temperature, but that temperature doesn't mean you, you are in the right spot. Just means that, yeah, I'm keeping the temperature. What are the conditions of, of the airflow through the kiln? Are you cheating? Are you cheating? Exactly. And, you know, people always talk about, ah, more air, uh, it's costly. Well, yes, more air is costly when it doesn't come from the right spot. More combustion air for me, or excessive combustion air for me, is very costly compared to excessive, I mean, again, to a certain reason. But the proper air here is right. Having, if I don't have enough air, increasing that air is going to help me not hurt me. Right. That air is what temperature? That air, that air, that air, that 2.1 moving down the tunnel is what temperature? It's energy. It's energy. Okay, it's it's energy. energy that you supply because, you know, I talked about the heat distribution, but the, bus the side burner here should not be working like crazy to maintain temperature, etc. or something is wrong, is really wrong in the sizing. You should have plenty of energy coming through that those burners are here to stir, supply a complement of energy, but not work. You know, when, when people, uh, and hopefully you didn't do that, but when people have to double their quantity of burners to keep up the temperature here, a lot of time it's because the energy which was available here is not coming. So you have to cheat. <laughs> I, <see. laughs> I, I, I liked when you described it that way. You, you want to use the energy in the tunnel because it's there and it's out. The temperature's 1,500 degrees. Yes. 1,600 yes. degrees. Yes, of course, the and air. If you, don't, if you don't use that 1,600 degree air, yes. you're going to use ambient air from outside through the burner. Exactly. To try to get it. Exactly. You're much, much better off using the 1500 you've got in that air already. Plus, and plus. And add to it with the burners. Exactly, exactly. Plus, you know, preheat a lot of time. Ah, oh, we need to put a lot of excess air on the burner to burn the crap out of the brick. Well, there is so much oxygen into that air coming through, you know. And the quantity of air you can bring with the excess air on the burner is so small compared to, 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 to just adding a tenth of a pound here is going to be more air than what you can do with 10% excess air on, uh, more on the burner. But that 10% excess air you put here to get a bit more oxygen, it's going uh, to be costly. Way more BTUs you have to put in to the burners. 
again, I'm not saying ah, double the air passing through the firing zone, it's going to be great. No, because you, what, you, you, you destabilize your system and you're going to bring the heat forward. Yeah. Of course, it's a balance. But a lot of time the balance is not necessarily backdrafting, but the balance is in this area shrinking. And that's when problems start. For me, the, big, the biggest thing to remember is this versus that and that ratio. Not, not the value itself, but the fact that what I do here and there and their relative flow. If I have this part right, I have 80% of my kiln properly running because this, this becomes your, the, the foundation on which everything else works because there is not much you can do on the combustion air unless you have 200% excess air. There is not much you can do uh, on, on that intake, you know, the, the rapid cooling still have to, to do its work. But if, if this is off, Everything else is off. Everything else is off. It's, you know, it's the snowball, but it's the, the core of the snowball. <laughs> if, if it's wrong, it won't grow or it will, <laughs> it will become too huge. <laughs> All right. So yes? What do we got on our kiln? Let's compare. Our yes. Kiln yes, yes. So we, we're clear now. I mean, now, uh, I mean, we are on the same. We're following you. Uh, I'm 100%. Okay. On board. All right. Well, it's, okay. different. it's different. It's different than the way I've operated you know, it's, just, it's just a different way of looking at what we're trying to accomplish. So it's kind of. It, it, it's kind of, it's, kind it's kind of hard to swallow. <laughs> <laughs> right? And, 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 and it, it, it grows on <laughs> <laughs> I guarantee you. Right. It, it grows on you. I like that. <laughs> After you see what have happened at Tulsa, well, it grows on you. But I'm glad we have something a bit obvious in Tulsa. You know, uh, Elgin was not very obvious because I mean, we we brought we brought some uh, good uh, good points in Elgin too. But uh, uh, Tulsa is is a perfect example of what is wrong and what can be. How you write it? And we're basically both looking at the same area in the geological problem because we were taught that that's supposed to be a neutral zone. Yeah. And you're looking at it like you need some flow in that area at a certain percentage. Yes. A certain yes. Mass. Because the neutral zone is 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 a word that I I, I despise. <laughs> You know, that, that's the way we we have it right or wrong or just a different way. But that is the way we have all been brought up through and learned to operate our kilns. But you but you under but yeah, go ahead. If there were a legal expert in the room here right now from Lingle, they might disagree with something, but the flow you're talking about going through the fire, they would agree with that the, the Because they are they are sizing their fans. You know, they are still sizing their fans. So there is something, I mean, and I've, I've worked with, I've worked, I've, I've actually uh, commission, recommissioned Seri Kiern, uh, Lingon Kiern, Keller Kiern, uh, Ajema Kiern, not just in your, I mean, I've worked with not every kind of tunnel kilns in the world, but I've worked with enough to have a good feel about them. And that principle of if you don't have the airflow here proper, is is universal. What is the exact quantity? That's not. Uh, no, but it, that's where you experiment. That's when you tune up and and you see like uh, in in, um, in Tulsa, we started. We actually started with those numbers. And last time I was there, Matthew said, Ah, looks like. We, we, we better when we are around 3.5 and we maintain the, the same proportion and I said great, great. 
I gave you a starting point so you didn't go in the dark, you know. And I'm not saying this is your objective. Your objective is to rethink the way to do it. And let me finish by, yeah, go ahead. I was just going to ask, what, what would be some of the downsides to what we would see on a product? I mean, right now, I know we're not anywhere close to these numbers. No. Ratio-wise, no. man, I don't think so either. But <laughs> for with, with looking at these numbers, let's just say it was, we're going to go to 4 or 3.5 or somewhere in that neighborhood. What would be some of the, the, the attributes that I would see from my side to side? I don't. Transfer on the car with color pulling hacks. That's that's the one you need. I mean, not that value, but that's where you need to How be. Much we're pulling from rapid cool back down to burning grease. That's that's it, when you have your sweet spots here at whatever push rate you you are, then you need to maintain it. Adjust this to maintain it. Exactly. Okay. Because this again will dictate what happened so I mean in, in all reality we need to be if we get we get the flow how we want it and, we, and we're understanding where there is going the pressure there between burning or baking or rapid cool is a very important number mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that's for me if this is right you you have most of your keen operation mastered then you need to then you need to concentrate on on your burners, uh, excess air, you know, running time, etc. And we can go back to that. But if, uh, and I know I repeat myself a lot, but if you don't start with that right, no matter what you're going to do, it's not going to be right. It's going to be. Mm. You're fixing the wrong problem. Yes, y you are not starting at the right place. You know, it's. And the key after that is to transpose it. You go on, mo I mean, uh, what kind of product are you doing here? Uh, king size and? Just king size. Oh, you have one size. Okay. Actually, you have, uh, okay. That helps tremendously. Because then it's purely a question of 10, 12, 14, 16. It's, it's because you have the same cross section so because you have another factor, and we discussed that in, uh, in Elgin a lot, is the, the cross-section of the hack will also interfere with the exchange and the flow. And I mean, the way the flow can pass through and it can complicate transition between modular to, to king size or vice versa. But when you have one size, all you have to focus is your mass of air, your mass of brick. When you have those magical ratio, Six cars per day or, 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 or 16 cars per day, it's going to be the same. Let me also debunk the last, uh, what I call the, the myth of the, of the zero or neutral zone. And I don't want to offend anybody, and I don't want to offend any of your mentor. The, the neutral zone, the neutral pressure, was right with my first drawing of, my or of the original tunnel dryer. One exhaust, open door. That neutral pressure, it was an indication of how stable my kin was. Yes, but let, let me uh, do another sketch. <laughs> so, and I measure here a pressure, and I measure zero, zero inch of water column. This is open. I have a, I have an airflow coming in, and okay, yeah, 
in that spot I have zero. That's a guide for if I speed up my fan, oh, my zero spot is going to change. Okay, that's fine. When you have this system, and we're going to make it really simple, over pressure and uh, wasted recovery fan. To achieve that zero pressure, let's say that I need a pound of air. One, one pound of air. Okay? Because in that cross section, when I have one pound of air there, I create zero pressure in that, in that area because I have a certain volume to occupy with a certain quantity of air. Right? If I put two and remove one, we have one pound, we have zero pressure, we're good. Yeah. Let's say now I put four, but I remove two, uh, three, sorry. My, uh, <laughs> my path is wrong. I still have one. Do I have the same cooling capacity here? No. So, my, My, my zero neutral point is still there. Yeah. Do I maintain the same condition in the cooling end? Absolutely not. Yeah, makes sense. And I put my zero point at the back, but actually the zero point was more beginning of the firing or something like that, right? I mean... I always check mine at the end, right before rapid cools. Okay, so... And actually we had some pretty simple checks. I mean, it's just all right. And, and see where, where, where yeah. the flame... Yeah, and... Hey! Seriously? <laughs> and, and, and you were making... Sh sure, sure. You were making sure that you were not backdrafting. Yep. But when you, say you saw your flame going one way or the other, it was not telling you exactly what you were doing. Mm -hmm. Just that you were not on the wrong side of the fence. But how far from the fence you were... Yes? Food for thought? <laughs> Grant, Grant is like... <laughs> so, I have nothing against that concept with the right kiln. But that concept is wrong Here. For, for, for a tunnel, a modern, what I call a modern tunnel kiln. Okay? okay? Basically, you just took everything I know back here. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, what, that was David, David, uh, what's his name? Uh, David, last week? Mickey. David Mackey. He said, uh, okay, uh, uh, what, what is the pressure I need here? I said, I don't know, I don't care. <laughs> oh, yeah, you, you, every, how he said that? Uh, everything for the flow or, or the flow first? or Because, yeah. If, if, if you have to remember one thing is, forget about the pressure, the pressure is a consequence of flow. So, we need to know the flow. If we had, you know, when, when you blow a balloon, okay, you create a pressure, you have a certain, you know, yeah, you have a flow resulting in a pressure, uh, I mean, actually it's a static system, but, or a straw, you know, but, yeah, it's a, it's a one in, one out. This is much more complex. You cannot rely on that pressure. That pressure is only valid, again, that pressure is only valid if you set your fan here to pull one and here to blow two. And to say, okay, the fan can move 5% of speed, this fan can move 5% of speed to accommodate the beginning and of the push, blah, 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 and I know there are, even if it goes at 0 0.9 here and 2.1 here, I won't be totally off. But if the fan here and the fan there can <coughs> regulate in a big band, this one can go to 5, 6, this one can go to 5, especially if you are trying to <laughs> get the most, and the pressure is going to be maintained, but everything else is not going to be maintained. 
Okay? Yeah. We good? Yeah. All right. Bon, let's go to the specific now. <laughs> you okay, Alan? <laughs> oh come on, no, it's not. It's, it's just different, and, and, it, and, I, and I'm, I'm following your concept, I'm the concept. And 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 I'm trying to 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 explain all the elements, yeah, so it's very, not like very gentle. Thank you. <laughs> you know, but you know the thing is, if I just drop the bomb, like okay, this is you need this ratio, you need this, you're gonna be like. What the guy is? What, the, what is he talking about? Where, where, where does it come from? You know, you could, you can I'm still say. Oh, yeah. So what? Mother of all bombs. <laughs> but you know, uh, with this, I'm trying to 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 justify <coughs> the reason why I'm saying what I'm saying. You know, and again, I'm I'm. I'm the basis of that is the number of kilns I've, I have surveyed, you know, the, I have surveyed probably at least a hundred, a hundred of kilns. I've, I've, I've commissioned uh, probably 30, 40 kilns, you know, from, from scratch, plus the one we modified. I mean, if that concept was wrong, I would not use it. You know, uh, I would not even talk about it. I would say, oh, that's my small soup and uh, I do what I can with that. I don't mind sharing. I don't mind explaining because ev anybody can use that as long as you understand the concept. It's a concept, but the concept, you know, when, when, when Cyric, Durek, uh, Durek, <laughs> uh, Lingle, Keller, Ajemak, when they design a kiln, they have to start somewhere to size their fan, to size everything. So they need to have a, a certain understanding of airflow through the system. You know, a kin is not just burner, a kin is fan size. Okay? So we, we just apply that in terms of how do we operate and, and a lot of time people, the customer tend to not see what is behind the, the, the design, you know. And, and the worst you can do is actually modify a design of a kiln without consulting the engineering company. Seriously, yes, they may charge you. Yes, they may uh, tell you, oh, no, don't do that or what. But please give them <laughs> the benefit of the doubt that they, they had an idea behind it. Okay, it doesn't work, so maybe they can bring you something to make it work, you know? So, with that said, there's been changes made to this kill. Oh, and I don't, I don't know about that, yes. yes. There was. Oh, there was? Um, past burning group 8, right? The last burning group, there was a not the burning group 9, and that was removed. They changed the dynamic of the uh, rapid cool area. Uh, what were some of the changes that were made that were probably weren't too mingled? Oh, well, quit using the uh, contrapose, yes, that was changed. That was and and the rapid cooling, rapid cooling, you have a zone which is gone. Uh, what they did, they took out burner group 9. Uh, the concept was that we didn't have a long enough cooling zone. Your cooling zone is quite short, yes. So that's they took the burner group out and added two more rows of rapid cool. Uh huh. But the, by doing that, and I may be wrong on this, but by doing that, we took away a lot of heat that we could have had in the kiln by going from nine burner groups to eight. Uh, that's yes. The removing power, especially at the end of the firing zone, that's where you know if you follow the logic of what we just discussed. If you if you don't have enough power at the back end of the firing zone, that's where it takes the 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 load of air coming from the from the cooling end of the kiln. So even though the air is like 1500 Fahrenheit, it still needs to come up to 2000. So Usually, 
burner, the last burner group or the last two burner groups don't necessarily make it in temperature for the soak, but are actually finishing raising the temperature of the air, which then benefit to everybody else, you know. And I never try in a kiln to to set my soaking up to the end of the last burner group because normally if I'm doing it right I can't I can't reach the temperature on the last one and it's fine so basically our soak don't need to be in six or seven not in eight normally normally I would not be able to make it in eight and it's and it's a it's a it's a symptom for me that I'm doing the right thing of course, I, to prove that, I, I, I make flow measurements, but... I can, I can attest that here and on the kiln at the new plant at Elgin, our last burner zone was never at the peak temperature. It was always significantly less. That's how it was here, too. Sure. And it's fine. It's perfectly fine. Before your move on your nine. Yeah. yeah. And then that happened, and then right now we soak in a... So you have to shift your soak. You have to shift the soak. And you have to make sure zone 8 is working and is strong enough. And it's fine to be strong because it's actually receiving a good quantity. If he has the right quantity of air, you won't have hot spot because you will have plenty of air to dissipate that heat and dissipate it toward the front of the kiln. To move it, it's not an energy lost. On the contrary, it's an energy which is going to help seven, six, five, and the preheat. We're talking about energy transfer, you know, it's not a localized energy.